Simu 1.18 is headed your way and brings with it some awesome additions. We'll talk about what's new and I'll equip you with the latest setup and optimization tips from the Simu community. I research so you don't have to. Stick around. Guess who's back? Back again. Hey everyone, welcome back. I want to start by saying thank you for the overwhelming support of my last guide. You guys are awesome. Let's talk about what's new in Simu 1.18.0. When you first run Simu, you'll notice you're immediately greeted with one of their latest features, the Quick Setup Assistant. This is a really nice addition that helps you set up some things right out of the gate. As you can see, the devs are subtly nudging users to set a custom MLC path. This is where Simu stores data such as game saves. The default is within the emulator directory, but if you ever delete that directory, your saves go with it. It is recommended you set an MLC path outside of your main emulator directory for this reason. You'll also notice the option to set your default game path as well as the option to download community graphic packs. When you click next, you'll see a few more familiar options. You can now configure your inputs right from the screen. Speaking of inputs, this is another great new feature, but we'll cover that in a second. You'll also see a few more familiar options here. In the bottom left, you can select the option to hide this menu the next time you open Simu. If you disabled it and want it back, you can also find it in the Help menu. The next new feature is Additional Input Settings. Simu 1.18 now natively supports DSU Client, aka Simu Hook Motion Provider Protocol, and is now configurable as a separate input API within the input settings. They've added motion support when Wiimotes are used as input API for GamePad. They've also added motion support when using DSU Client for emulated Wiimotes. Bug Fixes They've added various small tweaks to the debugger for better readability of disassembled instructions and added more PPC instructions to the assembler and disassembler. They've fixed a couple of Vulkan bugs, such as the one where stencil clear could also unintentionally clear depth, which fixes some issues caused by NVIDIA driver 445.75, and added alternative code path for when R4 G4 textures are not supported, which fixes crashes on Intel GPUs. All right, that covers what's new and bug fixes. Now let's get you set up and optimized. There are multiple ways to update Simu. The easiest is to open Simu Navigate to the Help menu and select Check for Updates. As you can see, as of this video I have the latest version so there's nothing to update. Another way to update is to download fresh files from the Simu website. Be sure you're also grabbing the latest Simu hook version to ensure compatibility with the latest Simu. Now that we have the latest Simu and Simu Hook versions downloaded, we need to navigate to our existing Simu installation and drag over the files from the zips. We'll start with Simu. Windows will likely ask you if you want to overwrite these files. Yes, you do. Now we'll do the same thing for Simu Hook. Again, if prompted, choose to overwrite the existing files. Now, let's suppose you want to start completely fresh, or more likely, you broke something. Don't worry, it happens to all of us. Let's start fresh. Decide where you want your new installation of Simu to live and drag over the entire Simu folder from the zip file. Now, do the same thing for Simu hook. And you are done with installation. Before we even open Simu for the first time, number one, as always, update your GPU drivers. Now that that's out of the way, let's adjust our compatibility settings. Right click your Simu.exe file and select Properties. Now, navigate to the Compatibility tab. 
check Run This Program as an Administrator and Disable Full Screen Optimizations. Next, click on Change High DPI Settings. Check both boxes in this menu and click OK. Now we're done with compatibility settings. Now we're going to change some GPU settings. Right click anywhere on your desktop background and select NVIDIA Control Panel. Once here, we're going to select Use Advanced 3D Image Settings. Now we can click Take Me There, which will bring us to Manage 3D Settings. Now click on the Program Settings tab. If Simu is not already in your list of available apps, you'll need to click Add and navigate to the Simu.exe file we installed earlier. Now we're going to make the following changes. Set OpenGL Rendering GPU to your graphics card. Set Power Management Mode to prefer maximum performance. Set Threaded Optimization to On. Set Triple Buffering to On. And finally, set Vertical Sync to Off. Now click Apply and we are done with GPU settings. Now let's set our page file. Open Windows Search and type in Performance. Now select Adjust the Appearance and Performance of Windows. Now click on the Advanced tab. Now under Virtual Memory, click on Change. If you've never been to the Virtual Memory screen before, you'll notice the options are grayed out. Deselect Automatically Manage Paging File Size for All Drives. This will enable the options. Now click on Custom Size. I like to set my paging file between 10,000 and 15,000 megabytes. Anywhere in that range you should be good. After setting your paging file and clicking OK, Windows will prompt you to restart. Now we're done with setting up the paging file. Now we'll adjust some CPU settings. First, bring up Windows settings by clicking the Windows button on your keyboard plus I. Now select System, then Power and Sleep, then Additional Power Settings. Here, we're going to check on High Performance, then go to Change Plan Settings. Now click on Change Advanced Power Settings. Now we'll just confirm our minimum and maximum processor state is set to 100%. Looks good. Now we're done with CPU settings. We are now ready to open Simu for the first time. As we discussed earlier, this quick setup assistant is a new feature in Simu 1.18. As I mentioned earlier, I'd highly advise you to set a custom MLC path, but for the sake of this demo, we'll leave it default. Now let's set our games path. Remember to select the folder that contains your games, not an individual game. Now we'll download our community graphics packs. Click Next. I'd like to click on Automatically Check for Updates, but you don't have to. As you can see, we're able to configure our inputs right from this dialog, but I'll go ahead and do it in the general settings. Now click close. At the bottom of the window in blue, you'll see an option to download shared fonts used by Simuhook. Go ahead and do it. All right, let's move over to general settings. Under options, click on general settings. Now let's move over to the graphics tab. Under Graphics API, select OpenGL if you have an NVIDIA card, and Vulkan for everything else. Now under Upscale Filter, set it to Bilinear. There are certain situations where something like Nearest Neighbor might be a better fit, but for most purposes, Bilinear will do just fine. 
Now let's move over to the audio tab. Under General API, change it from Direct Sound to X Audio 2. If you're experiencing crackles or pops in games, it may be solved by adjusting latency here. Finally, under TV, change the device to your main sound card and set channel to surround. Do the same for your gamepad. And we're done with general settings. Now let's set up our inputs. For this demo, I'll show you how to get the new DSU client set up and running. I'll be connecting my PS4 controller. This assumes you have DS4 Windows installed and your PS4 controller connected to your PC. In DS4 Windows, click on the Settings tab, then make sure UDP Server is enabled. Now click on Start. In Simu, click on Input Settings. Choose the controller you want to emulate, then under Controller API, select DSU Client. If you set up your server correctly, you'll see Client 1 as an option under Controller. Now just set your buttons as you normally would. Now you can save your configuration. Give it a name that's meaningful. Now save it and we're done with input setup. Now let's move over to the debug menu. Let's look at custom timer. For the most part, you'll be fine leaving it on semi default, but if you want to experiment with any custom timings, you'll change it to QPC. This will enable all these options. Under MM timer accuracy, set this to one millisecond. Finally, set use semi hook H264. And we are done with the debug options. Now we'll set up our graphic packs. Right click on a game and select Edit Graphic Packs. For this example, we'll use Breath of the Wild. Now under Enhancements, select Clarity and No Depth of Field. Under Graphics, select Resolution and set it to your desired resolution. Do the same for shadow resolution. I set mine to medium. Next, under FPS++, check all the boxes in this area. Finally, under workarounds, select the options appropriate for your graphics card. Since I have Nvidia, I'll select the Nvidia options. And we are done with graphic pack setup. Now let's set up our multi-core recompilers. Right click a game and go to edit game profile. Since my CPU has four cores, I'll want to set dual core recompiler. Now set thread quantum to 100,000. If you're not sure how many cores you have, you can press Control shift escape to bring up the Task Manager. Once in the Task Manager, click on the Performance tab. In the lower right, it'll show you how many cores you have. Now use this guide to determine what you should set your multi-compiler to. Now for the final section of the guide, updates and DLC. To install an update or a DLC, go to File, then Install Game Update or DLC. We'll start with an update. Navigate to where you have your updates. Go inside the file, go into the Meta folder, and select meta.xml. Now we'll do the same thing for DLC. And 
And that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you see something I missed or have another best practice you'd like the community to know about, leave a comment. I'll see you next time, and remember... Goonies never say die!